Hey folks, Dan Fedor here. Um, back in February, I announced Astronauts, and it's been about a month, so I thought it was about time to show off some of the stuff I've been working on. Some of the contractors I've been working with have also been doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, and probably uh, the best place to start would be uh, with some of the, the artwork stuff. So let me see if I can get that loaded up. Okay, so one of the more exciting things to show off this time around is new concept art. Um, some of you probably saw in the daily logs, um, daily news. I've been working with a new illustrator. Her name is Sabina Lewis. You can see her down here. Um, and she produced this new piece for Kaleg. Uh, Kaleg is an asteroid that uh, orbits in a um, somewhat unusual orbit that passes through the Mars and Earth orbits. Um, so as a result, it's uh, a fairly popular stopover point, um, especially in the early colonization of the Neoscavenger solar system. Um, so what we see here is um, this is their ship breaking fields. It's one of their most famous features. Um, so if you've got a, a ship that needs to be decommissioned, um, you tow it over here and uh, these folks will break it into its constituent parts and recycle it. Um, and they've made a, f a hefty trade out of doing that um, to the point where there are more ships coming into Kaleg than they can typically process. Uh, so there's something called the Boneyard. Um, so further out from the asteroid are just a bunch of floating derelicts and they don't have, uh, they don't have a scheduled time for decommission. They're just kind of floating there while higher priority stuff is being taken apart in these, these bigger uh, ship breaking fields. Um, and so what we see in the foreground are some uh, scavengers. Uh, so this is actually looking like it might be the first origin story that I add to Astronauts. Um, you start the game as one of these ship breakers and um, you're kind of picking over the bones of these, these old derelicts, hopefully finding enough parts to um, retrofit one and make it spaceworthy again. Um, and once you do that, the, the game begins with you in your new, new old ship. Um, so I thought it was important to maybe more than anything else get a picture of this, uh, since this is going to be starting area number one. Um, long term, I'd like to have multiple starting areas, um, some, some more uh, civilized and, and high tech, some more backwater. Um, this one is an interesting kind of mix of the two because it's a very high-tech facility, but it has elements of, of kind of scavengers and homeless people um, living around it. Um, but yeah, I, th I think she did a fabulous job of, of kind of encapsulating everything uh, about this place in one scene. We can see the, the floating wreckage uh, out here with us, a lot of which is tethered to the rock uh, to keep it relatively stable. Um, and what's harder to see here but exists elsewhere on the asteroid are some of the more mainstream services, um, ship refueling, cargo, uh, there's a bar over there called Mescaline. Um, so that's, that's more of the, the civilian or, uh, I guess, um, business-oriented stuff. But here, out of the way of the main space lanes is where all the junk hangs out. So another of the systems that uh, Mike and I have been working on is uh, the power power systems, um, and specifically the reactor. Um, I'll load up a, a test scene here just to kind of illustrate some of what's going on there. Um, so in the in the teaser, we saw this uh, really complicated reactor UI. I can actually conjure it up here. Um, you probably remember this from the teaser. Um, anyway. That was kind of a proof of concept of the level of, I guess, immersion in controlling ship systems that I'd like to achieve. Um, and this is kind of the first few steps towards making that integrate with actual game systems. Um, so what we've got here is a test room. Um, it has the reactor in the middle. Um, there's a backup power supply battery here. Um, and then a couple appliances to draw power. Um, so there's a cooler, a heater, a couple lights. Um, and if I turn on the power overlay, you can kind of see generally how the power uh, flows here. It comes out of the battery, goes through the reactor into the rest of these appliances. Um, 
and that is because uh, the battery or the reactor right now is in something called battery mode. Uh, if I open up the, the panel again, it has a power bus. So off is the equivalent of cutting off the battery uh, from the rest of the ship and powering down the reactor so it's not doing anything, it's just inert. Uh, battery is basically connecting the circuit with the rest of the ship so the battery can power the rest of the ship and all of the ship's subsystems um, in, in addition to this reactor's control panel. Uh, you'll actually see this kind of ticking down over time. These are the batteries that are currently connected. Um, and in order to fire up this reactor, we have to go through a, a series of um, preparations. Um, so this is a, an inertial confinement fusion reactor, uh, which is basically a little pellet target that gets shot by a bunch of lasers all at the same time, and then the explosion of that pellet from that laser uh, energy causes the middle of that pellet to compress so much that it fuses, igniting uh, a fusion reaction. Um, and then that fusion reaction sustains to become our fusion reactor for the ship. Um, but in order for that to happen, it has to be in an evacuated chamber. Uh, it has to be a, a vacuum chamber. So right now we see our core pressure is somewhere above the rough level, um, probably atmospheric pressure. So usually the first step is to get the pump going, uh, and we'll see that start to tick down. And while we're waiting for that, we can start to turn on some of these systems, like this is a generator, a magnetohydrodynamic generator, kind of like a water turbine or hydro turbine, except it uses uh, electric, uh, what do they call it? electronic uh, flow flux to uh, generate electricity instead of water flux. Um, the cryogenic system will keep our reaction chamber within nominal levels. Um, we're going to need to align the lasers to the target as well as feed the pellet target in there. The capacitor has to charge, which it actually has while I've been blathering on here. Um, and we're actually below rough uh, pump levels. It's not going to make any more difference now, so we have to switch to the turbo pump to keep reducing it down to a vacuum. Um, and just as it's getting ready to uh, hit vacuum, we'll turn on our forward and rear uh, magnetic field coils, which are basically containment fields um, for the reactor so that the, the reaction doesn't blow out past the chamber, um, and the fuel regulator to control the flow of uh, helium-3 and deuterium. So everything's ready to go. Um, green's across the board, so we hit ignition. Capacitors drain, uh, pressure shoots right up, and so does the temperature in the chamber, um, which is a good sign. We want that. that you know, just like your car needs to explode gas to go, this, this reaction needs to be exploding continuously in order to produce electricity. So we have uh, we now have a power grid that's being fed power and it's draining a little bit of power from that uh, we're draining fuel here um, and as a final step we can switch the power bus to charge mode so that excess energy from the reaction can go back into the, the battery that powered us in the first place um, so with that uh, we now have uh, everything running off the reactor. You can see it's, uh, it says item reactor ICO3 ignition, um, which is just debug language for this is the reactor in ignition mode instead of battery mode. And you can see the battery over here is holding a charge of 40.959. Um, just by way of example, uh, I can go in here and I can switch you off. Um, and you can see now that uh, the power overlay shows our, our power is cut off. Uh, can't go through the reactor to the rest of the ship now. The battery is still sitting there at, at nearly full charge. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, switch back to battery mode. And then uh, we're passing through again. The systems are back online and you can see the battery here is draining. It's, it's just dipped below 40 kilowatt hours. hours. So um, that's the general idea, and all of this is, is towards the, uh, the, the milestone of getting players to board a derelict and find all of these appliances turned off, uh, maybe some charge left in the batteries, the reactors switched off, and a lot of this stuff might be broken. You might have to repair, repair conduits or reroute conduits. Um, maybe get some charge back into those batteries, and then finally, 
coax that reactor back uh, into ignition to fire up the ship and, and get it underway. Okay, so here we are inside. Um, this is sort of like a test uh, space station. We call it the character generation station. Um, and this is to show off some of the other features that uh, especially Mike has been working on while I've been doing the power stuff. Um, so for example, um, we have new pathfinding in here. Uh, if I send you over here and unpause, um, you can see uh, the sort of blue and orangish uh, footprints showing debug information on, on how it's pathfinding from point A to point B. Um, he's really made uh, leaps and bounds of performance um, improvements here. Uh, since he got started, uh, what I had there was a lot clunkier and slower. Um, and this should hopefully speed things up, especially in situations where we have a very large, um, very large spaceship, lots of tiles, in many cases thousands and thousands of tiles. Um, and if you've got dozens of people walking around thousands of tiles, it can really chew through performance. Um, so that's a, that's a welcome addition. Um, you also notice uh, he added a little player indicator here. One of the first things he said when he started working on this is, I wish I knew who my guy was. Um, and uh, that was his his quick and, uh, quick and easy way of doing that. Now we have, uh, we have a little indicator follow him around uh, wherever he goes. Um, and he also has uh, a new context menu system. Um, so I don't know if you remember the old sort of gray boxes that would pop up whenever I wanted to act on another object. But now if I right click and hold, I get these nicely styled buttons. Um, not only are they pretty, but it's a little bit easier to understand now because um, we can see that this is referring to an item, this is referring to an, an action. Um, and in fact, if I, uh, if I right click on something like this, there's multiple objects under where I clicked, so you can see uh, each of them is a possible uh, target. So if I then choose uh, air pump, um, the things I can do there are use the control panel, whereas uh, if I had chosen, say, wall, I could scrap the wall or uninstall the wall. Um, looks like our how wolf has gone to sleep on some clothing. Um, so another thing we have been working on is being able to tear down parts, put them up, um, and sort of the beginnings of repairing a derelict. Um, actually, I noticed I forgot to turn the reactor on in this, so he's slowly draining electricity. If the lights go out, that's why. Um, so we'll send our how wolf over here, um, and he's really tired. I don't know why he's really tired. It doesn't look like he's really tired. Um, and we'll see if we can, uh, for example, go over here and uninstall this conduit. So I'm going to pause a minute. Um, it didn't go straight to the conduit because, A, it needs to pick up an item first. There's a drill right there. Uh, you need a drill, or depending on what you're doing, a certain tool to enact the change. So first it went over to grab that tool got the tool, went over here, and then started doing a welding type animation to show that it's working on it. Now, um, as a result, we have a loose conduit here um, where the old one was installed, plus these installed ones on either side. And this is something we can pick up and put in our pocket for now um, until there's a more robust inventory system. Um, and from here, if we wanted to, we could carry it from point A to point B, or we could say um, the loose should be installed. Let's say I want to put it there. Um, so he goes, picks it up, brings it over here, starts welding it to uh, the ceiling, and now we've moved it over here. Um, just kind of pointless in this context, but if you're in a derelict, and suppose you arrive on the derelict and there's a bunch of broken things everywhere and some of these conduits are uh, severed, um, you could theoretically cannibalize conduit from over here, put it over here to reconnect this and then reestablish power to part of a ship, usually before you've turned on the reactor and um, started firing up all the systems. Um, and so far we've got this working for uh, conduits, walls, floors, 
Um, there's certain other things like um, uh, these are hull patches, which are kind of like a, a lazy slash emergency repair you can do to things with a hole like the floor or the wall. You just slap it up there and it temporarily deals with the problem of there being a hole in the wall and you don't lose atmosphere. Um, and uh, yeah, the the idea is, uh, again, to, to flesh out that K-leg starting uh, origin story so that you're, you're sort of salvaging from a bunch of junk to make a ship of your very own out of all of these derelicts and begin your adventure. Okay, so one last thing I thought I might show is um, a bit of a recap of character creation and how I sort of see the beginning of the game going and how that dovetails into the, um, the K-Leg uh, origin story, the, the shipbreaker that we saw a concept art for. Um, so uh, in a typical game, I picture spawning into some uh, character creation environment like this. This is sort of designed to be like um, a, uh, an employment searching um, facility uh, and your apartment is kind of off of that main facility. Um, and uh, we'll go over to the apartment to kind of choose what we look like first, but um, We'll come over here next and then start uh, choosing kind of career history stuff. Um, so we're using the sink here to choose basically pronoun and appearance, which is uh, your presentation in the world. Um, so just to switch things up, I'll change it to he, him and uh, a random appearance. Um, this is uh, completely random right now, but at some point it probably would make sense to, to give you a little more finer control over um, the various aspects of, of how you look, um, but just to, to sort of show some of the variety. Um, so we'll say, okay, we'll look like that, I guess. Um, so I messed up how he's got there, but okay. Uh, and then we'll head over here. Um, Having chose our, our physical appearance, we'll now choose kind of where we come from. Um, this is like a little phone booth, like phoning home. Um, and there's a list of different uh, places that I can foresee starting the game. Uh, currently, we're looking at K-Leg. Um, and then depending on what you choose here, you get different um, sort of benefits and drawbacks from growing up in that place, uh, whether it's through um, availability of resources or even just the absence of gravity um, and also being able to choose your level of citizenship versus illegal status um, so for now we're we're on K-Leg uh, we're gonna say uh, we'll be a prepaid customer which which means we um, we're like a permanent resident instead of an illegal alien there um, we'll head down here to the job kiosk and this is um, it's a little bit more detailed and I won't go, actually before I do anything else, I'm gonna there, get rid of that. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit more complicated and I won't go into every last detail here just because it would take a while. But um, again, it's, it's kind of like the, the labor department at your uh, visa slash citizenship center. You're, you're choosing, um, in this case, uh, all of the things that build your resume, um, hypothetically, to choose a job. And in this case, you're actually defining your character. Um, and we'll say Shipbreaker just because that's that's the origin story that I'm trying to show here. Um, so as a Shipbreaker, you, you spent your term, say, learning how to operate a drone and how to operate in zero G. Zero G. Um, and in your spare time, your secondary activity was, um, let's say, cooking. Uh, so you confirm, and as a result of that, you made a new friend, Lily Onya Dicacci, uh, who's a criminal from Puerto Nuevo, uh, Europa, and you made a new contact, uh, Miracle French, who is another shipbreaker, this one from Calico City series. Um, and. I can go through this one more time just to kind of show maybe a different event. Um, so your second term as a shipbreaker, you only learn one professional skill. And this time, let's say it's operating an environmental suit. 
and you decided to bone up on your ship engineering, let's say. So you confirm that. Um, you injure yourself during day-to-day -day activity, and you're framed for a crime you didn't commit uh, and sentenced to prison. Um, so the guy who did it was probably Donovan Martin. Um, he's he's going to go into your black book as somebody who doesn't like you for some reason, and you probably now don't like him. Um, so now you can see you can't get into any of these regular jobs. You are stuck being a prisoner. Um, and then as a prisoner, you would choose some skills. Uh, let's say you learn how to gamble and persuade people. Um, no special events this time around, uh, but you served your time and you can choose normal careers again. And what would normally happen here is you do this a number of times until you get an event that sort of um, allows you to start the game, like your first job on a spaceship or your first maybe ship of your own. Um, and then um, you could then theoretically just start the game uh, with that uh, ship. However, um, there's one last thing over here, the, the health kiosk. We'll head over there and use it. Um, and this is kind of a, your last place to uh, hone your character. Um, so we can see that right now I have all of these drawbacks. I'm feeble, fragile, hypovolemic. A lot of this is just because I grew up in zero-g. Um, but the one benefit is I have a slow metabolism, um, which means I have six points, seven bad, uh, minus one for the good, six points left to spend on various uh, pros and cons for my character. Um, and I left this pretty wide. Compared to Neo Scavenger, this is pretty broad, and I'm, I have yet to see how many of these I can actually support with interesting content. But for example, um, we could say I'm a genius, um, I have an iron stomach, um, I am observant, um, and let's say I, I'm tough. I'm tough and I'm strong. Even though I grew up in zero-g, I spent that stint in prison and maybe I, I toughened up in there. Um, and uh, maybe I'll say I'm tidy. Um, and these plus or minus values will of course change over time. But now we've, we've kind of achieved a uh, balance between good and bad. Um, and then from here, we would start the game as a shipbreaker in K-Leg, probably just floating around from derelict to derelict, ostensibly doing a job for the K-Leg shipbreaker's office, but in our spare time collecting parts to build a derelict and start our adventure. Okay, so that's, uh, that's about it for today. Um, I'm looking to, to hopefully start doing these videos a little bit more regularly now, um, maybe on the order of once a month or two. Uh, just kind of keep people in the loop on, on what's happening and uh, show you whatever new tricks we're working on. And uh, yeah, I'm hopefully getting us to a point where you guys can actually start getting your hands uh, on the product as well. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon.